All right, let's talk about related rates. So I'm going to read the question first, and then I'll kind of explain what I wrote over here. Um, so you have a container in the shape of an open right circular cone. So here's your cone, as shown in the figure to the right. The height of the container is 10 centimeters. So the whole thing is 10 centimeters. And then there is a diameter of 10 centimeters. So I went in and I said, OK, if that's the diameter, my radius is 5. I have a feeling I'm going to need a radius. Um, the water in the container is evaporating so that the depth h, so the actual height of the water, is changing at a constant rate of negative 3 over 10 centimeters per hour. Okay, so the h is changing at a rate. This is the rate of the height. So that's h prime. So I need that for later. Okay, and then we know that in a cone, there's like this container that's the cone and then there's this water portion in the cone and this radius and this radius versus this height and this height are going to be proportional to each other. So I did R over H equals 5 over 10. So the radius is 5, the height is 10. Cross multiply 5H equals 10R. You can solve for R or you can solve for H and I did both. And later, I'm going to have to use at least one of those. So depending on what I need to find, I'm going to have to either plug this in for R or plug this in for H. Okay, so the first part is find the volume of V or volume V of the water in the container when H equals 5. Indicate units of measure. All right, so here's the volume. They are so nice that they give you a formula. I will not give you a formula. But here is the formula for volume of the water in the cone. All right, so this volume, basically we just want to change either the R or the H. We're looking for the height equals 5, which means we want to keep the H. We want to change the R. What can we change it into? Oh, we can change the R into H over 2. R equals H over 2. So you can see in the first part, right here, you have 1 third you have pi, you have the r squared, which is now h over 2 quantity squared, and then you have the h. All right, you simplify a little bit. This is with a calculator, yes, but you simplify a little bit, and then you get pi over 12 h cubed. So this is the same as pi over 12 h cubed. This, even if you leave it like that, even if you leave it like that, will get you one point. So just realizing that you can plug in for r, and then you get this new formula that just has one variable, which is the height. And then from there, you can use your calculator, and you literally plug in 5. So the height is 5. What's the volume? There's your volume and your label, so centimeters cubed. Um, at the end, all the labels are going to be a plus 1. So even if you don't have that, you still get this plus 1. And then all the correct labels will get you an extra plus 1. So that will bring it up to 9 at the end. OK, part B. Find the rate of change of the water. All right, so the rate change of the volume of the water in the container with respect to time um, when h equals 5 centimeters indicate units of measure. All right, my volume formula was right here. So in terms of height, here's my volume. And then I want to find the volume rate in terms of time. So I want to find V prime. And then when I take the derivative, I'm still going to have an H prime. So I am in terms of time, which means I have a V prime and an H prime. Technically, this is like dV over dt. This is dH over dt. All right, so pi over 2, leave it alone. 3 comes forward, and then H squared, and then times H prime. So this is your derivative formula for volume in terms of time. That's your plus 1. And then literally, you plug in 5 right here for the height, because they tell you when height equals 5. And then you plug in your h prime, which they give you at the very beginning of the problem. And then you plug it all into your calculator, and then you get this uh, final answer. This is volume in terms of time, right? So divided by hour. OK, the last part, it says, Show that the rate of change, okay, so here's the thing, whenever they say verify or show, they're basically saying, hey, we know what the answer is, we already told you what it is, but we want you to prove to us that you know how to get it. 
So it showed that the rate of change of the volume of the water in the container, that was a lot of words, so the rate of change of the volume, okay, is directly proportional to the exposed surface area of the water. Okay, let's really parse this down. So something is directly proportional to something else. Okay, so let's say y was directly proportional to x. If it had said y was directly proportional to x, you would say y equals something times x. And then what is the constant of proportionality? That's k. So you're solving for k. We just have to figure out what y is. We have to figure out what x is. Okay, what is y? It's the volume rate. We already have a volume rate. Okay, I think we're going to be okay. There is my volume rate that I'm writing. So dv over dt. So I'm being nice and clear. This is in terms of time. Okay. And then I have k times, and then it says directly proportional to the exposed surface area of the water. Okay, think about the surface area of the water. The surface area of the water, the top of the water, is a circle. The area of a circle, that's what we're directly proportional to. So the area of the circle is pi r squared. So v prime equals k times pi r squared. Okay, and then I plug some things in. So here's V prime. So this is V prime from right over here. So you see the pi over 12 times 3 is the same as pi over 4. Here's my H squared. Here's my H prime. And then here's my K. Here's my pi. And then we want to have not just an R and an H, but we want the same variable. So I change the R into H over 2. So now I have H over 2 quantity squared. So that's kind of like what I did before from up here. So that's where I got it from. Okay, so now we filled in this part. So we like rewrote it that is going to be a point as well. Okay, we are going to solve for k. Are you ready? So left side, nothing changes. Right side, all I did is I squared. I get an h squared. And then when you square the 2 on the bottom, you get a 4 on the bottom. Okay, okay. So I have k pi right there. And then I have a 4 on the bottom. And then I have h squared. Okay, that's all that I did in that step. All right. In the next step, you can see pi divided by pi, four, div one fourth divided by one fourth. So this divides away, this divides away. Oh, the h squares also divide away. This whole thing and this whole thing right here divide away. K equals dh over dt. K equals h prime. K equals h prime, which is negative 3 over 10. So show that the rate of change of the water volume of the water, we did that, in the container is directly proportional to the exposed surface area of the water. Okay, so we showed that it's directly proportional. That constant of proportionality is negative 3 over 10. Okay, so that gets you all nine points. And then you probably saw randomly over here, I said, how do you solve this? Okay, so like an extra add-on, um, because you might need it very soon, is how would you solve something like this? So just to remind you, okay, what do you do first? Well, you need all the x's on one side, you need all the y's on the other side. So that gets divided, it becomes 1 over y squared. This gets multiplied, you get a dx on the right side, and then you get something like this. Move it up. And you can see right here, I got all the y's on one side, I got all the x's on the other. Oh, and then I'm solving. So I'm solving for y, basically. So then I have to integrate, integrate. I literally did nothing else. When you integrate, you're integrating a y to the negative 2 power. 
This is not a natural log. Um, if it was a y to the first power on the bottom, then I could do the natural log of the absolute value of y. But this is technically y to the negative 2 power. Okay, the antiderivative of y to the negative 2 power is negative y to the negative 1 power. You can do the box method, you can do the substitution, you can do whatever you want, but this is going to be the antiderivative. You can check because when you take the derivative of this, negative 1 times negative is positive and then that gets reduced by 1, and then you can see that that's the derivative of that, okay? Okay, on the right side, you have a constant. When you take the antiderivative, it's that constant times x plus c. Technically, there's a c over here and a c over here, but we don't really need it on both sides. This would be like c sub 1, c sub 2, and then you can just subtract it over to the other side, whatever. It's still going to be a c. It's some sort of constant, okay? And then my next step is to get rid of that negative. So multiply everything by negative 1 times a negative becomes negative 1 third x times a negative. Well, if it's a constant, which could be positive or negative, times a negative, I'm still just going to call it c. So c minus 1 third x. And then this means that it's 1 over y. So then if I'm solving for y, I can do 1 over the other side. So flip the left side, flip the right side y equals, here's what I get when I solve for y. So that might be helpful for later, like tomorrow and stuff, okay? Um, so good luck. Good luck, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments.